Again, welcome back to this session where we are looking at, closely at, how do we really get supported to publish in the Ocelox or Afri world publishing. The background to this can be said to be everything we've said before now. We've always said, isn't it, that there's need for a new philosophy for galvanizing academic work at the highest levels. And also from the base, from undergraduates to graduates, up to PhDs or PhD techs, the slant of PhD we want to work on. But importantly, therefore, we need to say to ourselves, if we have done this amount of work up to PhD tech levels, how best can we publish those ideas? We've already seen that we need to be able to use a nine-step process that captures in meaningful headings almost everything we say about research in the research methods canvas. So it's not any distance away from that canvas. So mastering the canvas is almost like having a map in your mind that you can write to. Because we've been using this over the years, I, do, I don't necessarily have to write the stages anymore as headings inside my, when I'm writing it, in order to cover the stages. But in order to teach how the framework is used, we always tend to uh, give an example where in each section of those nine sections, we retain those bullet points or numbers of steps and just follow them and put our own notes under them, after which we remove them so that the paper comes together organically. But now we are also saying, how can we extend this thing to wider publishing remits, including not just those journal papers, but also other things like super books, uh, research monographs, professional reports, and other things. And to me, I just want to share the website for the Afri World Publishing. So one minute, so that we can actually get going on that. Okay, now uh, we all see I'm sharing the website for Afri World Publishing. Okay. The Afri World Publishing actually is another name for Ocelox Academic and Global Publishing. And we are working to recreate global research, learning, teaching, and consulting. We want to outline the guidelines, uh, guiding principles and pathways for publishing state-of-the-art research results in various formats, journal papers, conference papers, proceedings, super books, reports, and so on and so forth. What I want us to share first is to go to the philosophy first. The philosophy is basically a restatement of the vision. We say that we have a vision to transform and democratize global education and change. But writ large, this is again repeated as all these things we are trying to do, to do the kind of publishing that can support these affordances, that can help to create better products and services, move ideas around, create innovative products, create digital platforms, wealth, jobs, and help to enhance the happiness of humanity generally. Of course, because the developing countries have more problems than developed ones, to support them closely in fast-tracking socioeconomic development in those climes. But if we all do all this, we need publishing that can cascade those ideas around the world. For there, we need different kinds of channels, for instance. There are about 19 marketing channels that are typical to, for most, most of what people do, and we try to uh, see how we can use those channels as well. Okay, but the point now is, how do we really live this vision? How do we epitomize this vision? We can say, for instance, that we are arguably, and that's to put it as humbly as we need to put it, the world's most innovative publishing system currently. Irrespective of the fact that being new is not 
you know, we've not necessarily made enough noise uh, to be noticed. But it's not about being noticed immediately. It's about continuing to do, do this thing we're doing to help those who want to publish in the best possible way. So that's what I'm saying. And it's about excellence in the publishing that actually covers the research, the integration of knowledge, the applications. And for this purpose, what do we do? We try to design all publications. As an example, I said before, super books, research monographs, newsletters, conference proceedings, journal articles, to enable readers and learners to become more creative than possible with traditional publications. So our publications are therefore informed by the steps in the research methods canvas, which again, we share below, and I've actually talked to that before this time around. The idea is to simultaneously make all academic subjects research and enterprise development units to prepare prospective authors for this game shifting endeavor. For that, we need to soak them in the processes we're developing. Okay. I'm not going through this again, but that is the research methods canvas again. However, there are other things that work for us, and that we want to keep training authors. What we want to do initially is that when we are seeing this conference as a boot camp, so that all that come to this conference, all people are actually being told our new way of operating that can augment what they're currently doing. So the beauty of that is that they're not throwing away what they currently do because there are other good points about that, but they are actually innovating what they do. But if they want to submit to our own journals, then they have to meet these standards. The standards are far more onerous than the traditional ones. And I said before that traditional journals contribute about three main lines of contribution to knowledge. I mean, approximately, I don't say I know every single journal in the world and what they do, but I've known enough of them to see the common threads passing through all of them. And that is the theory, the research and practice. They just talk about it mostly. After making that their incremental contribution to knowledge, they say, okay, this is how it contributes to this. And when they say future studies, they leave it to who to implement or interventions. Who should implement it? No. We as corporate academics develop protocols for implementing what we say or galvanizing consortia that can do that. This is the way to take that result into society. Our publishing reflects that, as you can see from the ladders of contribution in there. However, also, we mind the gaps in publishing which can come from the failings in effective research design and execution. That's why we use the canvas. One of the gaps, for instance, is solving the wrong problem. If we use the sweet pot principle, then most of the problems we are solving will be cogent. And that's important enough because for you to formulate a topic that gives somebody a doctorate over after four or five years of work, but that topic is not solving any main problem. It's a waste of somebody's four years. And that is the, that is the risk we are playing by being over traditional in the way we look at how knowledge is enacted, how knowledge production is done. You know what I mean? So actually, therefore, we also understand conversations about the weaknesses in current systems. There was a statement by Elon Musk, for instance, that majority of PhDs and traditional academic papers are useless. I don't want to accept that in that sense. But I want to say that there's some truth in what he's saying. In my own country, or you know, Nigeria, for instance, We've given examples of how so many academics are not producing knowledge that can actually shift the needle in the world or solve significant problems of the country. And we remain underdeveloped after 60 years of independence. With 220 universities approved, what else are we talking about? So Elon Musk cannot completely be wrong. Then how do we fix it? In a recent paper written by Professor Odo and Meissen, we, we actually responded by saying that the corporate academic model that we developed provides sufficient solutions to this problem. And that is given here for you to look at. If you tap into the website, you can download the paper. Of course, I've actually included the paper in the, in the preprints I sent to all of you before this conference. So the main thing now is to use these things to galvanize 
higher productivity in countries that can gear up their GDP, gross domestic products, the GDP of those nations. But you know, it's, it's not the G, GDP alone that makes a notion successful. It's also the index of happiness, you know, how people feel. And this is why in the Ocelot's fiction, we are not stopping with creating wealth, creating products and services. We are thinking about the happiness, enhancing the peace and happiness of humanity. So that's very important, okay? Then also we need to publish super books. Super books are a different animal altogether. Something that comes close to them is what we call these big books that have several editions because they're so well written, containing a lot of case studies, practices, mobilizing collaborations across the Kyohelex, and so on and so forth. If you take a book like Sam Elson's Economics, written with uh, another professor, not Howes. I have a 13th edition of it on my library. I'm looking at it as we speak. Such books are actually close enough to super books, but they're not super books. Why? Because in as much as the detail, every element of microeconomics and macroeconomics you need to function in the world, they do not contain a section that uses the five forces and seven E's to develop how those constructs can be used to create stuff in the world. So no matter any book you see in the world today that is 20th edition powerful, it is not a super book in our own way of looking at it because they don't contain those instruments. Okay? It's as simple as that. But you can read a lot of things about it because we put... Okay, but what makes our, our publishing unique? Is it? You've already seen it in the canvas. You've seen that we are delving into much depth about some of these things. You see a lot of some of the articles we write on LinkedIn and socials cascading these ideas in different ways of writing, the momentum of understanding going on. We are extending the originality criteria from three main ones to seven. It's not about counting them, but it's about the organic unity and power that flows from these constructs. One of the things is that you cannot gain papers you want to submit to our journals. Why? Because you have to make far more effort to talk to those seven realities instead of three. So if you can easily gain three things, you can't gain seven, trace, seven things that easily. We will notice that you're copying and you're not really solving original problems. And we are not going to accept that kind of paper. I don't mind if in one of the journals only three papers are published in a year. It's not the business. The business is those papers are seminar. They must be seminar if they are written to this standard. The criteria are difficult to game. I've said that. The canvas helps us. Okay, what are the limits? What are the nature of things we do in our field of publishing? We cover the entire academic and global publishing enterprise. Name them. All books, super books, journals, everything is there. In sections of this, of this website. We have been loading up more content. Guidance for authors. The common standards is going to be uploaded after this event so that every author can tick in and see what we want him to do. We continually examine the pathways and perils and innovations in academic and global publishing and up again. We understand how radically innovative academic publishing can be achieved by the protocols we develop. We need to also automate the publishing process using uh, you know, the systems that can make it autonomy. When people upload, you know, papers are now brought together properly and then we can edit and send things like that. We can also coach people on fast-paced publishing. That is, if you want to publish four papers in a month, that states me the standards will tell you how it can be done. But these people have to come to training for some of those details. We also master the nature of corporate academic thesis. We've already covered that anyway. And then again, we organize publishing networks, special interest groups, author syndicates, for developing the super books and research monographs in different disciplines. So this is another thing we must do in order to show examples of what we're talking about and put those things in the libraries of universities and polytechnics and higher educational institutions generally. We can hothouse intensive international conferences and specialist workshops on advanced research methods and top quality prepared boot camps, exactly what we're doing today, okay? And this event, with the feedback that comes from it, is going to be repeated about four or five times this year. It's a very aggressive, intensive system we are developing for transiting traditional academies to the way we operate. We develop excellent and high impact personal and organizational publishing programs. So if you want us to coach you based on your field, 
how to extend your game from the traditional model to understand the you know application domains you that are close enough you can easily manage the nature of general cultural literacy wide reasons you need to do the nature of disciplines you need to start interplaying we are there to support you we say we actually are developing the holy grail in successful corporate academic publishing that's why that word holy grail was put into the title of this e-publishing and the economics of publishing we we do the economics of publishing we, we look at the flows of finance that can support publishing and how we can democratize it so that people who can afford a lot can still publish and then of course society can benefit more Importantly, based on the capacity we have for integrating knowledge, the I of K, which is a, a very strong pillar of what we do, we develop connectionist models of publishing and related ecosystems. You can see the number of platforms we are building to coagulate these competencies across uh, the world. We create writing and plotting. We can create writing and plotting on different genres of novels for those who are interested in novels. We have a separate capability to work on what are called the seven systems for writing best-selling novels. But of course, that is a bit of a distraction, isn't it, to academics working in technical areas. Uh, but we do it as pastime. So it's not as if we are spending all, all our time in it. But it helps us to know how to look at plotting, for instance, intrigues. Because even the paper you're writing to argue has some element of suspense and intrigue coming into it, if you understand what I want to say. We can write blocks. Multimedia, we are today serious about digital market, di digital publishing. We don't have nine platforms for nothing. It's the reason, the reason for that is that we want to mainstream blogs, social media publishing, and even digital marketing through multimedia. In short, I have to confess today that we have now a new business line, which is called Ocelox Omnimedia and Entertainment. That is we are creating an HETV, higher education TV, films, industry, working with Nollywood, you know, Indiewood, Gollywood, Hollywood in future. Positioning reality TVs that do not talk about nudity, but talk about what is going on in different disciplines in the world, acted out as films or reality you know, TV. That's a very powerful construct. One of the papers we just wrote recently was titled the corporate academic celebrity business model, where I we exposed how the models used by people like Madonna, Rihanna, all the other musicians, the tennisters, what makes them tick, can be brought into the ac academic game. So you can sell academic ideas easily to a wider number of people, children, adults, because you're not trying to make it too technical. And it doesn't stop you from writing the technical bits for audiences that are more academic. So you, you're able to able to move around more easily, move, move ideas around more easily. And that's exactly what it is about. We can say that actually we are engaging in furiously effective self-publishing and via more tight and marketing of best sellers. That's all these things are lines of business within the African world publishing. They are still developing because the, the website was just uh, rolled out just about. Uh, I don't know, two or three months ago or something. Like of course, there are related specialisms in journalism, for instance, science journalism and financial journalism that we are also trying to mainstream. Well, that comes from my interest in financial economics and political finance and things like that, applied economics. So because I read a lot of these journalists writing properly, their understandings of the way the economy works, Financial Times, UK Times, the economist and I'm trying to borrow to improve the way academics communicate, you know, about the findings they have in this area. So that's specialist. There are case studies in innovative journalism that we also look at. Sometimes they are overtaken by events. Sometimes we look at the nuggets in them, how it imposed financial terms on the economies. And also we are on top of the emerging perspectives. We make sure we scan the environment every time to know whether there's something new coming up. Like this third GP AI, whatever. We look to see whether it can help, you know. Some of them don't always help sometimes, but we need to know. We can't be critical from a distance. We need to go and examine whether we can use it or not. So that's what I call emerging perspectives. And that brings me, to be honest, to almost the end of how do we publish? 
But the other thing that remains is that we're going to upload on the website these common structures for publishing so that people can use it to submit papers to us. Our papers are reviewed so thoroughly by people who have been working with us that in the end, the papers come out very nice. The likes of uh, Professor Odo, Professor Madiche, these are guys that we've been working on this right from 2021 webinars, which they co facilitated magisterially. You know, I was even learning how to, co you know, to facilitate from them. So these are the things that we have to offer. And it's not about us, to be honest. It's about how we can enable all of us to collaborate, learning from each other in order to improve what we are doing. I need to add that. At the end of today's program, it is our intention to now announce a call for papers across all our journals, about 30 of them, so that academics can use this approach to try to reproduce the papers they wrote before to see whether there's anything new coming out of it. I'm sure there will be. Or new papers they want to write, depending on copyright issues they may have. But the important thing, a paper that is properly written to our protocols so that we can even begin to look at those papers for editing. It's interesting that our editors are people that have been with us in this journey, for instance, and so on and so forth. You know, in real estate, for instance, people like Godfrey Odo and others. In marketing and entrepreneurship, people like uh, Madiche. These are guys you have to bring in. They are the experts in their field. They will help to improve the game because I'm not saying that everything I'm saying here that I, I am the best in all of it. No, I'm just providing a list. You, there is a little secret, actually. In the International Center for Research and Enterprise Development, the global platform that contains almost everything we're doing, we have a graduate school of academic and global publishing. A full graduate school, people can take PhDs in publishing or PhD techs. So it's, this is the list of what we're doing in that graduate school that I brought into the publishing firm so that we, we are doing what we are researching. That's what it means. That two-way traffic between researching stuff and doing stuff is the core essence of global corporate academicism. So I want to end on that note.